Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today, we're gonna be covering PlayStation 1. In this video, we'll be using a standalone emulator called EPSXE. I love this emulator. I actually use it on my Windows machine and my Android device. It's pretty simple to set up. I'm gonna walk you through setting up the emulator, getting your BIOS in the correct location, setting up your controller, and hopefully I'm gonna show you a few tweaks so it doesn't crash as soon as you launch it. Let's go ahead and get started here. So first thing you're really going to need are some PlayStation 1 BIOSes. Now I have three here. The main one that I use is the SCPH1001.bin. Needs to be unzipped and look something like this. There are other BIOSes that you can use, but the main one I focus on in this video is the 1001. You'll also need some PlayStation 1 games. Now these come in a variety of formats. My two favorite formats are PVP, which are PSX to PSP games. So as you can see, I have Final Fantasy VII here. It's only 1.5 gigabytes and it's one file. This way you don't have to mess with the three, four, five discs that come with these large games. Another file format is Ben and Q. So I have all of my games in separate folders and you can leave them just like this. Let's go to Bloody Roar 2. We have Bloody Roar 2.bin and Bloody Roar 2.q. As you can see, the Q file was only one kilobyte and the bin file is the game itself. There are a few other formats, but I choose to use both of these. The main one that I use on most of my systems are these PBP files. They come out a little smaller and you only have one file to mess with. Now we're gonna need the EPSXE emulator. We can start LaunchBox and we can download this emulator. So one of my favorite things about LaunchBox is there are a lot of emulator links built in. So if we go to tools, manage emulators, I'm going to add a new emulator. Emulator name from the drop down menu, we have EPSXE. So as soon as this is highlighted and clicked on, click here to download EPSXE. It'll open up a web browser. We can go right here to download it. If you just want to go straight to the EPSXE website, I'll leave a link in the description. Go to Downloads, and we're gonna be using EPSXE version 2.0.5 Windows. So I have that downloaded. I actually have mine on my desktop already, so I can go right in here. EPSXE 2.0.5. We're gonna right click. We wanna extract this. Now we have the emulator here. I'm gonna take this whole folder and place it in my LaunchBox directory. So I'll navigate to my LaunchBox directory, which is under my C drive, users, ETA Prime, LaunchBox. I'm gonna open up in a new window, snap it to the left here. I have a folder inside of here called emulators. I'm just gonna place it right in here. Now while we're here, we're gonna open up the EPSXE folder that we extracted. Go to our BIOS folder, and we're going to drop our PS1 BIOSes right in here. Now, like I said, I'm only going to be using the 1001. So we might as well place our games in the LaunchBox games directory while we're here. So I'll go to my desktop, PlayStation 1. These are where my games are. Games. Just drop them right in here. So now that we have EPSXE installed, we need to find the application path. So we'll go to Browse. We placed it in our LaunchBox directory. So it's going to be under C Drive, Users, whatever your username is. LaunchBox, Emulators, EPSXE, and we need to find the EXE. Double click. Click OK. We're going to close that. So from here, you can go ahead and import your games. But what I want to do is go and set up the emulator itself. So I'm just going to minimize this. 
where we're going to find our LaunchBox directory, emulators, EPSXE, and launch EPSXE. So from here, there are a lot of settings in this emulator, tons of settings. I'm going to show you some of the basic stuff. We're going to set up the controller, make sure overclock is not on because that causes a lot of systems to crash. So first off, what we want to do is go to options, CPU overclocking, and make sure X1 is checked. If this is blank, it usually crashes when you start it up. Next, config video. There are way too many settings to go over in this video. There are tons of tutorials online for using EPSXE, and they also have a really good help section on their website. For me, I make sure full screen mode is checked. Desktop resolution. Now this really depends on your system, but I can go on up pretty much all the way. But for this video, I'm just going to go to 720p, 1280 by 768. Internal resolution. You can check 2x or 4x. It's going to be slower, as you can see. I'm going to leave everything stock here because I don't want to mess around. The only thing that I'm going to change for this video is show my FPS display on startup. You don't have to do this, but I wanted to show you that it is running at 60 FPS. Click OK. We'll go back to config. BIOS. From here, you need to select your BIOS. It's going to open up our BIOS folder, and I'm just going to choose 1001. Click open. OK. Now my BIOS is set up. Last thing, set your controller up. Config. Game pads. Port 1. Pad 1. I have a wired Xbox One controller connected to my Windows PC. Pretty easy to do here. Direct input. X input. So you're just going to click on the corresponding control and press it on your controller. So that was my select button. Start. I'll do my D-pad now. Up, left, down, right, so on and so on. Go ahead and set your controller up. I'm going to go through this real quick. Now that we have our controller set up, press OK. We can close EPSXE. Now, like I said, there are a lot of settings in here that you can mess with to get the optimal performance or a better resolution. But for this video, we're just going to get it up and running in LaunchBox. We're going to close it. Exit, open LaunchBox back up, and we're going to import our games. So I'll go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. This is the Import ROM Wizard. Click Next. I'm going to add that whole PlayStation 1 folder that's in my LaunchBox directory. Even though there's separate folders in there, it will detect the games. PlayStation 1. As you can see, I do have two folders in here. That's OK. We're just going to click OK and Next. Platform for imported ROMs. We want to do PlayStation 1. So we'll scroll down until we see Sony PlayStation. Click Next. Choose an emulator. So we just set up our EPSXE, and that's what we're going to be using. Next, I'm going to use their files in their current location because I moved them to my LaunchBox directory. You can search for and download metadata from Wikipedia if you'd like to. I always just leave search the game information from LaunchBox. Next, box art. So to save a little bit of space on your system, if there's something you don't want in here, you can always uncheck it. I'm just going to leave it. I can always do that later on if I ever start running out of space. Next, EMU movies. Now you may be prompted if this is your first time importing ROMs into your LaunchBox setup to sign up for EMU movies. It is free to use, but there's also an option to donate and it unlocks some perks for you. So if you do donate, you can download more movies per day. It's definitely worth it. Same thing, if there's something you would not like, 
like screenshot for a high score, screenshot gameplay, you can always uncheck it. We're gonna click next. Would you like to specify any custom options? Next. Tekken 3 has three bin files. Luckily, LaunchBox knows that, and it's not going to import four separate versions of Tekken 3 for us. The ROM directory. And if we scroll over to the side here, we can see the extension. So I have my PVP, my Q files, and my bin files. Go ahead and click finish. It's gonna download all of our metadata and box art for each one of these games, depending on how many you're importing, it could take anywhere from a few minutes to a few hours. So sit back and relax. If you're importing hundreds of PlayStation 1 games, it could definitely take a long time. So my eight games were imported successfully. When I click OK, I'll have a new option on the left hand side here for Sony PlayStation. Now, as you see, I have disks listed here, but you can change your image type if you like. I do 3D carts, carts, you can do boxes if you want to. I really love the disks. And since this does not use carts, 3D carts will list the disks. Let's go ahead and start a game. Something easy to get into, Bloody Roar 2. This is hands down my favorite PlayStation 1 game out of every game ever made. All right, so as you can see up in the top left hand corner, I have my FPS listed. This is totally optional. If you want this listed, you can just follow what I did when setting up the EPSXE emulator. Now this game is so good. If you've never played it, I definitely recommend you try it. I'm not big into fighting games. This and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 are some of my favorite fighting games, like a lot of other people, but it plays really good with EPSXE. Now the cool thing about this emulator is it doesn't require a super high-end machine to run. Now a lot of the PlayStation emulators don't require a high-end machine, but I've been able to get away with playing this on an old second generation i3 laptop at 60 FPS. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I really appreciate you watching. Like I said, there are tons of settings that you can change around. Uh, if you watch that video there of the gameplay, you can see the shadows around the feet were missing. There are options within EPSXE to fix all of that. So one of the big reasons I love this standalone emulator versus, let's say, RetroArch is the options within the emulator. There are a few within RetroArch, but this has so much to choose from. It will run on a low-end machine. It'll run perfectly on a high-end machine. Just so much tweaking you can do. If you guys could hit that like button and subscribe because we got a lot more coming. And like always, thanks for watching.